Every culture has a way of preserving their stories, passing down lessons and legends to the next generation. For indigenous cultures, storytelling is vital. It's what weaves each generation together. But what would happen if those stories just stopped? How would you know who you were or where you came from? Well, that is where our next guest begins his quest into his heritage. In his new book, Becoming Little Shell, author Chris Latre begins to unravel the story of his family and the people of the Little Shell Chippewa tribe, whose story almost disappeared from history. This powerful message and story has been selected as a best memoir of 2024 by People Magazine, Esquire, and Outside Magazine. So we are very delighted to have Chris Latre joining us now. Thank you for being here. I'm Igwech. I'm grateful to be here. So let's, I have so many questions to ask you, but I want to start with your story. Okay. A boy, then man, who always felt his people were calling him, but didn't know where from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I grew up knowing I was Chippewa because grandma would talk about it, but my father and my grandfather both denied that we were native at all. So mm. I knew from the time that I knew anything about myself that I was Chippewa, but I never really knew what that meant until mm -hmm. you know I became an adult. Right, and there was a very pivotal moment, right? You were at your grandfather's funeral? Yeah, so, so my, my dad and my grandfather both also denied that we were related to any of the other Latres in Montana. Ah. And there's a lot of us. So yeah. then when my grandfather died in 96, and I went to his funeral, you know, the whole church is mm -hmm. full of Indians. And, and obviously Latres who were coming out to, to celebrate the passing into the next world of my grandfather. And they wow. were people I didn't know. So that was kind of a real kind of watershed moment as far yeah. as these stories I've been telling, been told, right. are wrong. I love how in the book you bring the reader along because you talk about the passage of time. You bring the reader along year to year. Why was it important to show the passage of time in this journey from 1977 to 2021? I think because in any of our storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, personalizing it with a narrative that people can relate to, I think is critical to getting the message across. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we decided, my editor and I, that that was the way to tell the historical things. Because I'm like a history nerd, you know? Yeah, and, and there's so much packed in here. It's yeah, just so you should see the cutting room floor. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So that was the challenge, you know? Yeah. But, but it's also what makes it important to people and that people can connect to is when they see their own story mm -hmm. in, in, in the story of somebody else. Yeah. Let's talk about history. I think we can all agree that one of the most shameful parts of our history is how our nation treated indigenous people. Tribes were separated and sanctioned off into little spots of land. But federal recognition wasn't even offered to the Little Shell tribe until 2019. Yeah. Why and what does that federal recognition even mean? Well, most tribes receive their federal recognition as a result of treaties with mm -hmm. the United States okay. government. And the United States government stopped uh, doing treaties with mm -hmm. tribes in 1871. They decided they weren't going to view us as sovereign nations anymore. Right. So, so we weren't part of that whole treaty process, though we had representatives at all of the big treaties in the West, whether it's the, you know, the Hellgate Treaty or the mm -hmm. Lame Bull Treaty or the Laramie Treaty. We, everybody was there and knew what was yeah. going on. But, you know, we, our kind of final disenrollment happened in 1892 and it was there that we became the landless Indians. And yeah. there was no way to become recognized again until 1978. Right. So in 1978, the Fed said, okay, we, there's all these unrecognized tribes. We need to figure out a way to include them in this process. And that is when we began the official uh, path to getting federally recognized, though for generations we'd been trying to prove mm -hmm. that we were part of this other group, you know, for, for, for over 100 years, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated process. And the, and the story, the book really tells the story, as you mentioned, and it's in, in the subtitle, Lost People. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's, it, your interactions with, with Lessa Fountain are powerful mm -hmm. in the book, and I think, I don't know. I, I wanted to know, as you're doing your book tour and you're sharing this message, how do you hope this story helps others like Chinook and tribes in Washington and Oregon? And, and what do you hope people realize about the lasting effects of colonialism? Well, it lives in us every day, whether it's through our generational trauma of our families who went through boarding schools and lost everything they had, mm -hmm. and the way our language has been taken from us and our culture. So it lives in all of us all the time. And the point that I like to make is that these kinds of restoration are a long game. And mm -hmm. we are living proof that, that the long game works. If you just keep after it and keep after it and keep after it. We did that for 150 years. And I like, I like to think that that is a story that overlaps into everything, whether it's mm -hmm. any social change we want 
to make. Yeah. Nothing happens overnight. It takes time. And, and we are proof that the dedication to that can, can matter and can work. It really, really shows in your story. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It, it was such a vulnerable and it was so authentic. Thank you for sharing it with us. And by the way, if you would like to hear more about Chris's story, he will be reading and discussing his new book at Elliott Bay Books tonight, September 5th at 7 p.m.